chapter 13, the day before yesterday. After a few moments of flashing lights, everything became quiet. Harold opened the potty door and peeked out into the darkened library. Cautiously, the two time travelers stepped to the library window and looked out. There they saw Melvin's father, Mr. Sneedley, zapping the bionic booger boy with a blast from the Combiner 20,000. Been there, said George. Done that, said Harold. In the corner, George and Harold found the coat and hat, which belonged to Miss Singerbrains. Immediately, they thought of a plan. Harold put on the coat and hat and climbed onto George's shoulders. I sure hope this disguise works, said Harold. It better, said George. We can't risk letting them recognize us. Soon, George and Harold were at the scene of the action. Mr. Sneedley had just fired the combined 20,000 a second time, and now the boys were ready to make their move. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sneedley, said Harold, trying very hard to sound like a grown-up. I'd like to present on to you the most brilliant science guy of the whole wide world award. Really? cried Mr. Sneedley. It's always been my dream to win that award. But first, said Harold, I'd like to have a look at that combino singing. Okay, said Mr. Sneedley. He handed Harold the combino 20,000 and smiled proudly. Um, said Harold, I need to look at it behind those bushes over there. George and Harold wobbled over to the bushes, unbuttoned their coat, and switched the two combinatrons. Then they wobbled back and handed the fake combinatron to Salzen to Mr. Sneedley. Um, everything's to be in order, said Harold. But before we present the award, we'd like to get a photo of you. Who's the we? asked Mr. Sneedley. Uh, I mean, I'd like to get a photo of you, said Harold nervously. George stuck his hand out of the coat and held up the forget your macaw to thousand. So choose, said Harold. Mr. Snigley looked down in shock at Harold George's hand. Then George pressed the button. Flash! Suddenly, Mr. Snigley forgot everything that had just happened. Dazed and confused, he stumbled back and rejoined his wife just in time for the robo-boogers to come to life and smash the fake combined at 20,000. Meanwhile, George and Harold were running with all their might back to the library, carrying the real combined of 20,000. That was so easy, laughed George. Yeah, said Harold. We sure got lucky this time. But when they reached the library door, George and Harold discovered that they hadn't been so quite l so lucky after all. <laughs> Chapter 14, Miss Singerbrains shouted Miss Singerbrains. I just got back from the restroom and found a portable potty in my library. Harold, said George, zap it with the forget your singy. Quick! Nobody's zapping anybody with anything, shouted Miss Singerbrains. She grabbed the forget your macaw to thousand out of Harold's, Harold's hands and yanked the combiner to thousand out of George's hands. I'm taking these things to the police right now, she said. Maybe they can sort this mess out. Miss Singerbrains marched downstairs to the parking lot, got in her car, and began driving to the police station. Well, said Harold, we'll never catch up to her now. Sure we will, said George. All we need is some wings. Chapter 15, 65 million years before the day before yesterday. George and Harold grabbed a box of salt and crackers off of Mrs. Singerbrains' desk. Then the two friends stepped inside the purple pony and closed the door. Quickly, George reset the controls and pulled down on the chain. A flash of green light lit up the room and the purple pony vanished. Suddenly, George and Harold were transported back in time to the late Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era, a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Cautiously, George and Harold peeked out of the purple pony which was now nestled precariously in the branches of a tall tree. Here, chicka chicka chicka! called George. Polly want a cracker? called Harold as he tossed a handful of salt hands into the air. Suddenly, the two boys were swarmed by hungry pterodactyls. Before long, a friendly looking pterodactyl, a quetzalcoatlus to be exact, swooped down and grabbed some crackers from Harold's hand. Aw, oh, look! said Harold. He likes me. 
Great, said George. Let's get him into the time machine and get out of here. Carefully, Harold took the pterodactyl on his arms and carried him into the purple potty. Then, the boys closed the door behind them, reset the controls, and pulled down on the chain. Suddenly, George and Harold and a new reptilian pal were transported forward in time to the day before yesterday. The door of the time machine swung open, and the three friends sailed out of the purple potty through the library window up and up over the town. George looked down on the city streets until he finally he, until finally he located Miss Singerbrain's car. There she is! George cried. I sure love our new pterodactyl, said Harold. I'm gonna name him Crackers. Don't give him a name, said George. We're not keeping him. We're just buying him. George, Harold, and Crackers swooped down and landed on Miss Singerbrain's car, which was stopped at a traffic light. Miss Singerbrain screamed in horror. Wait, said George, cried George. There's no reason to be afraid. You're just dreaming. I'm dreaming, asked Miss Singerbrains. Sure, think about it, said Harold. Purple potties appearing out of nowhere. Kids running around with laser zappers. Pterosaurs landing on your car. This stuff only happens in dreams. Gosh, you're right, said Miss Singerbrains. But it all seems so real. Well, trust us said George. In a few minutes, you won't remember any of it. Before long, George, Harold, and Miss Singerbrains were all gliding back to school with the good bell crackers. The Cabinetron 2000 and the Frickitchum Call 2000 were safe once again. Soon, they arrived back at the library. I'll keep an eye on Miss Singerbrains, said George. You take that pterodactyl back where we found him. Aw, oh, can't we keep him? asked Harold. No, said George sternly. He belongs at his own time. Now take him back. Aw, oh, man, said Harold. Sadly, Harold carried crackers into the purple potty and closed the door. After a few seconds, the time machine disappeared in a flash of green light. A half hour later, another flash of green light filled the room and the purple potty was back. So long, asked George. Um, nothing, said Harold. Did he have any trouble taking crackers back to his home? asked George. Um, not really, said Harold. You did take him back to his home, didn't you? asked George. Um, sure, said, Her said Harold, though he didn't sound very sure. Quickly, George zapped Miss Singerbrains with the Frickage Macaw 2000 and jumped into the purple potty. Then, with a quick flash of green light, they were gone. <laughs>